But uh, yeah, Coach, uh, just uh, user error here. Got to turn around and leave. <laughs> yeah, Coach, just that where y'all at here? You know, just headed, putting everything together here, getting ready for the first game. Just anxious to see uh, where we are and what we have. You know, it just uh, preseason's been pretty vanilla and pretty, you know, just getting guys evaluate, really doing a lot of stuff to evaluate guys in the preseason, uh, like most teams are. So some of the starters didn't play, a lot of the backups did. So now it's the time to put together a little bit of a game plan and, and see where we are and see how well we adjust in the game situations because there's always things that come up that you don't plan on every week. So and how good can you adjust to them and, and uh, get changes made? I'm just anxious to see where we are and how we play. How did the rookies do through up to this point? Uh, you know, you had, uh, you know, Audie, people talked about him and Graham and Darren Hall or some of your foot rookies that, and Rich Grant, of course, too. Well, I think all of them, if you, I just put them all kind of in the, together. I'm not going to really talk about any one of them individually. I think as a rookie group, whether they were drafted or undrafted and they made the team, that speaks for itself. That if they, if you keep them, even if they are a practice squad player, that means you saw a lot in them or you felt like there's a lot of potential in them. They've all played like rookies. They've all had great days. They've all had average days. You know, vets do too. But um, I think it's a good rookie class. I'm really pleased with the rookie class. I'm pleased with the rookies that we have. I don't think there's anybody there that's not capable of being an NFL football player. You know, rookies are rookies. It's just, it's, it's a lot different. There's a lot of things going on. You know, they, it's, even though you played, some of these guys have played in big games, it's different in the NFL in games. It's just, it is, the speed of the game, all that stuff changes. And you really, I mean, you get a little bit of it in, in preseason, but most of the time what happens is it's really backups playing against backups. And now if a backup gets in the game, he's not playing against a backup. So it may be a lot faster and a little quicker than what. And the only way you're going to find that out is until it happens. You know, you can, you can speculate and, you know, everybody does. They, nobody knows. I mean, everybody seems to have an answer of how this guy's going to be and that guy's going to be. You have no idea how they're going to be until you play. With your scheme, if A.J. Terrell is able to take that next step, maybe become more of a shutdown type corner, what does that do to what you're able to do schematically? Well, I don't, you know, first of all, Michael, I, I don't know what a shutdown corner really is. Um, I mean, I've had some really good corners in the past, and I don't know if I'd ever call anybody a shutdown corner because you don't, there's certain receivers you don't shut down. I don't care what they tell you. Um, that's why you double them. So it's, it's uh, and usually when you double them, you put your shutdown corner that everybody thinks is on the second guy. So you use two guys on that guy and you put the good one on the second guy. But, you know, the thing of it is, is they just, they all got to take a step. It's not only him, it's, it's everybody needs to take a step. You know, it's, it's what happened last year, two years ago, how I coached two years ago, how any of the coaches coached last year is really irrelevant. We all got to take a step in the right direction. You know, and, and uh, we have a lot of high expectations for our defense and for this team, as I know Art does and we do on defense. And so I think AJ, just along with all those guys, whether it be Isaiah, whether it be Debo, I don't care who it is, it, Jared Grady. I mean, we all need to take a step. If you're really good, you need to be great. If you're really great, you need to be a pro bowler. You know, if you're a pro bowler, you need to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, there's just always that next step that you need to be. Kind of a little bit following with AJ. How, what's your philosophy on traveling the corner versus sides? Like, how, do you, have you varied on that in your career? None you, But the thing of it is, is that it, it, everybody thinks that's so simple uh, to do. Uh, I heard somebody last night say something about, well, yeah, you got to take D-bone and spy hurts. Well, what do I do with all the other guys that we got to cover? You know, what about the running game? You know, you know, you can't just take a linebacker and tell him, okay, follow him number one. What if he hands the ball off? We'd like to go see that guy go make the tackle. It's like, you, you know, stop and think before you say something. Um, it, it, traveling can, can be okay, but there, there's certainly, the problem with it is when one guy travels, everybody else has to assume another responsibility. So it's not as easy as everybody thinks, well, you just take that guy and put him on this good guy. Well, it's just not that simple sometimes. Some offenses are. 
If they don't do a lot of motion, they don't do a lot of movement, they just kind of line up and they're pretty vanilla. Like back in the day when the Indianapolis Colts had Harrison and those guys, it was basically line up and play. Dallas Clark was gonna be here, Harrison was gonna be here. You know, it just, you kind of knew where it was gonna be. So yeah, you can match up, wasn't a lot of movement. They weren't gonna put Harrison in motion. They weren't gonna do that. that those days are gone, long gone. So everybody moves now. And then you got all the other stuff on offense where RPOs and things like that, you know, you just can't, you can't have four guys back there trying to figure out who they got based on one guy. So I'm, I'm not a big, ac big advocate for it, but I'm not gonna say that I've never not done it or that I wouldn't do it again. Out of curiosity, since you brought it up, where did you hear someone suggest say that Devo spy her? I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing Devo. Where did you hear somebody say D that you wanted Dion to spy her? Was that a, was that what was that one of us? I, was actually, that in a meeting? Or? That was a radio show. I just happened to hear it on the way home. I, I'm trying to figure out. I got a Ram truck, and every time you turn it on, the radio comes on, and I cannot figure out how to turn it off. So I don't really want to listen to it. So, but I, but it was on when I turned out of the parking lot, and this guy was talking about Debo spying Hertz, and then he went on to say, "Oh yeah, you just take this guy and man that guy, and you take Debo and you spy Hertz." Oh, good. Well, hopefully they only run one play, so that we can cover that one, because they they do have a few other guys that can play pretty well, and it's like, uh, so I just. I just turn it down. I can't turn it off, so I just turn it down. So, sorry for the radio, guys, but I just so it was. It was it made it sound pretty simple to me. You talked a little bit about Greg last time. I got that, but I mean, just that. You know, what does he do? Or what does he give you as you know, front person right up front and in front of the? Attack? Who's that? With Grady? Well, with, yeah, Greg Jarrett. Well, Grady's really. He's really a good player. I mean, he's just really a good player. He's really a good teammate. He's not, not only a player, he's a good pro. I mean, he just, the way he practices, the way he prepares, it's, it's, it's all those things. That's what makes those guys really special. And I think he's special. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that can move. He's got some quickness. I mean, he's got all the things. You guys have seen it. I'm not going to tell you any characteristics you don't already know about him. Um, he just, the thing that we got to try to do is try to get him and just like any player in a position where they can do their best. You know, if, if he's being double teamed all the time, yeah, that's great. He's being double teamed. That means somebody else maybe. But at some point in time, too, you want to try to get him in a position where he's not getting double teamed all the time. So, you know, that's our job as coaches to try to, try to work that out the best that we can. Coach, I think you kind of answered this question on Grady, so I'll ask it just on Debo. With those two being selected as your defensive captains for 2021, from your perspective, uh, what did you see in them both on and off the field that say, hey, I want these to be our defensive captains for this season? Well, you know, you, you kind of around the league, it, it's kind of funny because everybody always asks, did you know a lot about those guys, you know, before you came? You know, you know a lot about the offensive guys. Because those are the guys that you played against, and so you studied them. Matt Ryan's, you know, Ridley, those guys. Because when we played a couple of years ago, I played against them. That's who I studied. I didn't study, you know, Grady and, and Debo. But then you kind of start watching a film. You say, yeah, really good player, but you don't know the guy, you know. And then all of a sudden, you're with them in off season, and you're with them through training camp and all that stuff. And those two guys are just as advertised. I mean, they, they're, there's a reason why they're really good players. They're good pros. And to me, that's more of a compliment than being a good player. Good player means, yeah, you can play good, you got talent, but you do all the little things. You study your opponent, you do the things, you're a team guy. If I'm, you're asked to sacrifice, it's not always about, hey, how many sacks can I get? How can I, how are you gonna take care of me? It's how is the team gonna win? How's the defense gonna play as a unit? That's, what those, that's why those guys are captains. Because if they, you know, you aren't, players aren't going to vote for guys that are me guys. They're going to vote for us guys. And that's what those guys are. You're talking about putting Grady in the right position to, to be successful. But how much of that is also guys around Grady picking up in, in certain areas, especially in pass rush? Well, it's, it's a game of 11 guys. It's just like the, when Michael asked the question about, you know, matching up a corner. Well, I can't always put Grady in a position where I know that he's going to be. Then all of a sudden, when I move him, three other guys are playing different, too, up front. 
you know, or the linebacker might be playing different because he's not playing behind the same guy. So it's, it's we just got to do it in the context of the whole defense. It's all 11 guys have to work together for it. I, you know, it's just, it, it's the easiest place to always just get a guy singled up is always as an outside backer, as a pass rusher. But even then, offenses can put, a, put guys in a position to chip them. They can use a back to chip him. They can use a tight end to chip him. They can turn the protection to that guy. Like we used to do at Suggs, if Suggs was over here, we knew the protection was going to go that way. That's why almost Elvis Doomerville had 17 sacks one year because he was playing on the other side. All, always we're getting a one-on-one. -on -one. So you can do things like that. It's harder on the inside guys to do that because they – you know, there's there's going to be two guards and a tackle in there that's going to, and two of them are going to double team somebody, and so it's it's not easy to do. Uh, but that's our job as coaches to try to configure things that we can do to try the best we can to get him one on one. You're never going to get him free, but you just try to get him one on one. I think one of the most interesting things that y'all have done this season that I found is putting Jacob Tuoti Mariner on seven on seven and kind of dropping him back a little bit. What can you kind of say about what he has shown you in terms of versatility as uh, in this new role that y'all are wanting from him? Well, I always felt like when I watched film on him last year, I always felt like this guy can run. Um, you know, he's, he's young. You know, everybody can kind of looks at some of these guys, about three years guys like they're seasoned vets, and they're not. But he can run, and he's, he's really conscientious. He's another guy that's really a good pro. And I just feel like well, anytime you get guys like that, and especially if you can run, the versatility of being able to drop them, rush them, do whatever with them. We ask, we ask all our guys on defense to do a lot. I mean, all of our outside backers are pass rushers. They all play inside. It's just like we ask all of our safeties to have to play corner. All of our corners play safeties. Some of them have to play like a linebacker. We, we really want the defense to understand the entirety of the defense, just not their position. That's what we've really tried to instill in them from the day one, that you can be, the more you can do, the better. And we only dressed 20 some guys on Sunday. Well, you know, that's, that's too deep. You know, it, it, sometimes even if it is too deep, if a guy goes down, you may have to go play another position. We can't just all of a sudden bring one in from the street and play. So. The more you can do, that's what we really kind of done with all these guys. How much of your philosophy on pressure, to go back to what Tori was talking about with one -on, getting a one-on-one matchups, how much of your philosophy on pressure is that it confuses defense or opposing offenses enough that they might force them to be so worried about people that will get one-on-one -on -one pressure, one-on-one -on -one matchups for maybe a Dante Fowler or you know, maybe even a great gear. Like how much of your philosophy is kind of based on trying to eventually get there? Well, the thing about pressure is you know, the misconception um, is that it's really confusing to the quarterback. When you build a pressure, it's really not based so much on the quarterback as it is the offensive line. Everybody always talks about the quarterback. Ah, if you do this, this will confuse him, this will confuse him. No, he's not the one that's blocking. I mean, he may have to see the coverage and be able to throw hot, or he may have to do that or something else. It's the line. And the line has a certain set of rules and to where they turn. Is this guy the mic? Okay, are we turning the center to the mic? Are we turning the center over here? How, are they, how do they protect? Okay, that's where you're really trying to confuse. And if all of a sudden 54 is the mic all week and they're saying, okay, we're going to turn to 54. You hear quarterbacks, you, can, you guys hear them over the last, you know, on TV all the time. You know, 54 is the mic and they're pointing right there. Well, what if 54 isn't the mic next week? You know, what if 45 is the mic? Okay, and 54 is somebody else. 54 is the end. Okay, or that's the kind of stuff that you can do to confuse people. You may not, you don't even change the pressure. One week 45 is blitzing, next week 54 is blitzing, next week number three is blitzing, next week 91 is blitzing. It's the same pressure. But all of a sudden to an offensive line or even to a quarterback who's trying to point out the protection, hey, I practiced all week seeing 54 over there. And it, 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 that hit me a long time ago at, at a practice. I know I get winded here sometimes, but I really kind of do want to tell you sometimes what the thought process is and not just, just you know, I'm not one of those guys that doesn't want to give you an answer. You know, I, I do. I'm not going to try to give you a secret, but I'm going to try to give you an answer. But I went out to practice one day, 
this was years ago in the NFL, and the offensive line coach was ripping one of the assistant coaches that was running the scout team for having the wrong number on a guy. And I said, well, what would make a difference what number he was? Well, we know if that guy's the mic, that's how we're turning the thing. Okay, great. As a defensive coach, you just told me what to do now. So uh, that mic's going to be different all the time now. So what are you going to do if that's not that guy? What if that guy gets hurt? What if he's not in? What if I change the mic? Now you're gonna, how you, you can't protect it? So it dawned on me that, well, why shouldn't we move those guys all over the place and let them try to figure it out? So that's kind of how it happened a long time ago. Awesome, guys. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you.